there, I'm Jo from So Creative and today I'm going to show you about this lovely, lovely machine which is the Janome 230DC. This is Janome's entry level uh, computerised model. Um, there's a couple in the series, so the next one up is the 360. So this one, the 230, has 30 stitches and the 360, guess it, it has 60 stitches but they're very, very similar machines. So this is a um, a review, basically, if you've, if you've bought one of these and want to know some basics about how to use it. So we're going to go through um, winding the bobbin and threading the machine and doing some basic stitches. And we'll be creating a buttonhole. Or maybe you're looking at buying a new machine and wondering if this is for you. So this is what I'm reviewing today, the Janome 230. So let's have a look at what this machine has going for it, what it comes with. So as I say, it's, it's, it's an, an entry level um, computerized digital machine, um, which means it comes with lots of lovely benefits. So I'm literally going to switch it on at the side. So what happens with a, a digital machine is that it always defaults and is ready to straight stitch. So see here, we're on a zero, zero. So here are our stitch numbers and obviously the number corresponding to whatever stitch we want. So if we ever find ourselves in a pickle, we can switch the machine off, switch it back on again, and it's just gonna go straight away to straight stitch. So we've got horizontal spool holder, I'll go through that later when we thread, uh, bobbin winder, um, this is the bobbin winding tension. We've got a presser foot pressure, so that is going to determine how much pressure you want on your presser foot. Generally, you're just gonna leave it where it is unless you're doing something with heavy fabrics or thick fabrics or lighter fabrics. That's when you might change that setting. Um, we've got a speed control here. So this is what's going to determine how fast your um, fabric sews through. So it's not necessarily going to be determined by how much pressure, press, pressure you put on your foot pedal. So um, I'll show you through the, uh, the speed control as well. So here we've got our stitch selector, we've got our stitch width and our stitch length, and they're determined by these little symbols here. So stitch width, stitch length, same as if you were on a manual machine and you would have a stitch length and a stitch width um, dial. What happens with this is that it, it sorts out all the um, defaults for you. So, and I will show you when we do a zigzag, I'll show you how these all change. Also on this digital screen, it's showing that my foot pedal is in. If I take my foot pedal out, it's showing that it's out. And the beauty of this machine, along with most um, digital computerized machines, is that you can use the machine without the foot pedal. And that's by using the start stop button here which I will show you how to use when we do a buttonhole later. This is our tension disc here and our take up lever. And basically it's also got a um, needle threader. Again, I will show you how to use that later. It's got a drop in bobbin. If you're used to having a bobbin underneath here, this makes life so much easier. We just push that little knob and off pops the case and there we've got one of our four bobbins that it comes with there so I'll leave that out because I'm going to be winding that in a moment so what else does it come with it comes with four bobbins comes with a variety of spool holder caps um, a buttonhole foot a lint um, fluff remover uh, an unpicker set of needles blind hem foot zipper foot an applique foot, an over edge foot, which is fabulous for doing seams, finishing off seams. And this, which most people don't actually know what it is, is a little screwdriver to get underneath here. So for when you want to clean out your bobbin area, you can use your screwdriver. You can also use it if you wanted to, to take the whole foot off here, if you were putting a different kind of foot on. The other lovely thing it comes with, as with all of Janome, a wonderful um, manual, all in English and um, really good pictures and descriptions. And to top that off, it also comes with a 
or an extension table. So this literally is like that. We then flick out all the legs, take off the sleeve arm, which is here, that just slides off. And if you've just purchased this machine, you will find your buttonhole foot in this. I'll show you where it is, because lots of people ring us saying, I haven't got my buttonhole foot, but it will be in there, which is in the little tray. So slide that off. And then we've got a really nice area for um, quilting, or if you're doing heavy curtains, it takes the weight of it. So that's a really nice addition. And this machine comes with this extension table, as does the 360. So let's pop that back over there, put this on. And now I'm going to wind a bobbin. So I'm going to wind the bobbin. I first need to put my thread in. So I take off my spool holder. And always with any decent machine, you need to use some decent thread. So this is a Gutterman thread. What makes a good thread a quality thread is it doesn't have quite so much lint in it. So it was nice and smooth thread because all that happens if this thread is really bobbly is that it ends up in your bobbin case and it makes, makes your stitching really poor. So I'm going to pop that on the spool holder with the thread coming underneath and then I'm just going to secure it. So with this particular thread, I'm gonna use this small spool holder and use the flat side and just make sure that it's going to run smoothly as it is, okay? So we've got lovely diagrams on here as well. So it's showing us to use the bobbin thread tension. This is only for the bobbin thread and it needs to go in there and you can hear it because it clicks out. So this is just for winding the bobbin. And then I'm going to use the thread and I'm just going to poke it up inside and through a little hole there that's in the bobbin. Pop it onto the bobbin winder. And as you see, I've got the thread coming through from the middle and then up to up through the hole in the, in the bobbin. So now I'm just going to push that over to the bobbin winder stopper and you'll see from the display I don't need to do anything else I'll show you again it's gone that's back to normal slide the bobbin over to the bobbin a bobbin winder over to the bobbin stopper and the machine knows that it's bobbin winding so just got the um the speed at a, a mid speed and I'm just going to hold on to the top thread until it's done a few rotations because what I don't want to happen is this thread to get caught up into the bobbin winding. So when it's done a few, I can then just cut it off there and then I can just put my foot down. So I might as well put my speed up as well. So you can see what's happening. You're getting a really nice fill. It's nice and tight because it's in the bobbin tension and it's going nicely up and down and you're getting a perfectly round bobbin. I think that will do for now but basically what will happen is it will then hit the bobbin um, stopper and it won't wind, it won't overwind so then we need to do everything in reverse we take that off take it back I mean cut our thread and then there's a tiny little bit of thread there so I'm just going to cut that just so it it's out of the way so now I'm going to pop this bobbin into the bobbin holder here and it needs to go in as a letter P for perfect. I don't know if you can see that, I'll do that on here. So it's as if that is a letter P for perfect, as opposed to a Q for not quite right. So we drop it in as a P for perfect, so as the thread's coming down my left-hand side, and then we must get it into the bobbin tension. And it will naturally go, I don't know if you can see there, it's a tiny little bit, a little gap there. The thread has gone through there and it's gone over to the side and there's a little arrow as well so there's lots of things to help you so i'm just going to leave it like that until we've threaded it and then we can bring the bobbin thread up so as i said this is just for the bobbin winding so we're going to take it out of there and now i'm just going to follow the arrows so there's one behind and now we're going to follow the numbers number one is down through here now it's just reminded me because I've already got it, but at this stage when you're threading your machine, your presser foot here 
must be in the upright position. When it's down, it means that the tension discs in here are closed. And if we try to thread it with the tension disc closed, the thread would just sit on top of the tension and that's wrong. So we must make sure our presser foot is raised, which means now that my tension discs are open. So the thread has now gone nicely through the tension discs. We can't see them, we just know they're there. Number two, up to number three, and this is a crucial part too. I need to make sure that it comes through this take up lever. See the hole there? So the thread must go through that bit. And then down to number four, we've got a funny little dog leg bit there. There's a little um, scoot underneath that side. And then there's another little clip on the left hand side at the top of the needle. So now I've got it secured on top of the needle. I'm now going to thread the needle using my needle threader. So the thing about the needle thread is you need to make sure your needle is in the right place. If it's in the wrong place, what's going to happen is the needle threader is going to bash against the needle and not come through the eye of the needle. So these steps are crucial. So to check our needle is in the right place, I'm going to use my needle down button, which is here. I'm going to do needle down. I'm going to push it again to get needle up and it resets. It is in the right place. And now I'm going to use my, find my needle threader, which is here to the side. And I'm going to bring it all the way down. And now I'm just going to create a little L shape. So I'm using my index finger of my left hand to hook that thread underneath the little elbow there. There's a little arrow. And I'm literally just going to then hook it under this other piece here. So in theory, that's in the right position. I can now gently lift. You might want to just show this. I'm going to gently lift this. And by doing so, let go of my right hand and it's created a little loop and my needle is threaded. I'm going to show you one more time. So make sure the needle's in the right place. Needle down, needle up. Bring down the needle threader. Create a little L shape by going underneath all the little elbows and um, holders there. I'm holding the thread loosely with my right hand and then I'm literally just going to lift and let go and it creates that little loop and then I can pull the thread through. So now I need to bring the bobbin thread up because I've got my top thread and I've got my bobbin thread still there. So I'm going to use our needle down button here. I'm holding this top thread loosely. I'm going to needle down, push it again for needle up and it's scooted. I don't know if you saw that, but basically that's all that is. There we are. That's the bobbin thread up through and the top thread. And then we can just put our bobbin cover on and we're good to go. So now we've got it all threaded up properly, we can now have a little play. So first things first, we're just going to try a straight stitch. We need to make sure that our presser foot is down so our fabric is not able to move. And what you'll find with a computerized machine is that you won't use your hand wheel very much. If you're used to having a, a manual machine, you'll know that you have to bring your needle down um, you know, and then if you stopped at the end of a line, you need to turn a corner, pivot, you'd have to bring your needle back down. So we're going to set it so as it does that automatically. So needle down, every time now I stop, it's going to stop in needle down. So basically, as I said, with this machine, um, we just start off with zero, zero, which is our needle, a straight stitch with our needle in the middle position. So I'm going to pop my um, speed control right down to the slowest and I'm going to put my foot flat on the foot pedal floor. So that's as fast as it goes. So I'm not going to take my foot off, I'm going to use the speed control to regulate how fast I want to go. So go really really fast but that's probably a little bit fast for this demonstration. So midway is a good reckoning. So get 
to the end and as you see I've taken my foot off the foot pedal and the needle has stopped in the down position which is very useful which means I can now turn without losing my stitches and it's a really nice stitch both sides it's on a canvas which might make it look a bit bumpy but it's actually um, a perfect stitch might could have done with perhaps being a little bit longer because it is a thicker stitch so I'm going to show you now how to extend the stitch length so as I say this is the stitch selector which are all the stitches here and this is the stitch length so if you see there's a little cursor underneath I'm going to move the arrow so as the cursor goes to the stitch length and I'm going to then go up because I want a longer stitch length of three so now when I stitch stop it's going to stop with the needle down that's a better stitch because it's a thicker fabric a longer stitch and that's how we that's how we sort that um, so let's just say that we now want to do a zigzag so if we see here zigzag is zero seven so I need to make sure that the cursor is back to the stitch selector and now I can go up to seven which is our zigzag now if we look at the settings here it's defaulted to a stitch width of five and a length of one and a half so let's have a look and see what that does so it does a little stay stitch at the beginning of a zigzag and then if we have a look at that that's the default zigzag perhaps could have used a thicker uh, a brighter thread on this um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the stitch width wider. So I move the cursor over to the width and we've got a seven mil foot on this machine. So the most, the widest it will go is seven. If I push it again, the machine makes that funny little buzzy noise. It means you're asking it to do something it can't do. So the maximum width is seven and I'm going to take the length over to two and a half. So it's the same stitch, it's stitch number seven, which is a zigzag. But as you see, what we've done is we've manipulated the stitches and made them wider and longer. So that's quite an easy thing to do. Now, we can either finish off with a little stay stitch. So if I push this button and put my foot on the foot pedal, it's actually just going to do five stitches in the same spot and that's securing it so I can lift my needle, take it out to the side, and there's a thread cutter here at the side. There we are. So, nice, neat stitching. Well, neat for me anyway. But it's a nice, nice, easy to use machine. So, let's say for instance that we might want to use one of the fancy stitches. So I need to always make sure that the cursor is over here Say I wanted to do number 22, I could either go all the way up from seven up to 22, or I can go in tens. So if I move the cursor again, it's now using the tens. So I'm now up to 27, but I want 22, so I can now come down to 22. And give that one a try. It's got an ability See, lots of pretty, um, pretty stitches as well. It's got an ability to use twin needle. We can drop the feed dogs. There's so much we can do with that, this machine. But I think next thing um, I'm going to show you is a buttonhole. But before I do, I just want to look at this digital display again, because if we look here, it's also showing us what foot to use. Now, I haven't actually changed a foot yet. So I managed to do these decorative stitches with our normal foot. But that's saying use foot F. And this is foot F, which is an applique foot. And I don't know if you can see, there's a little F there. So how we take the foot off. So if I go back to a straight stitch, easiest way is to turn the machine off. Turn it back on again. See the needle re um, resets itself. So straight stitch is with A. So you may want to come behind. So to get this foot off, there's a little push button at the back of the foot and then the foot drops off. So this is foot A. 
So it makes it really, really easy. That's what it's telling you what foot to use for the particular stitch. But we're going to go and we're going to look at a buttonhole. You may as well just use number 24. So I might as well go over in tens. So over there, up to 20, back over and up to four. So what's our screen telling us it needs is it needs a foot R. So quite difficult to see there. If you can see that, it says an R on there. This is the buttonhole foot. Looks like a big contraption, but it's very effective. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop a button in this buttonhole foot, squeeze it down, and what it's done is it's created a gap and that's how big the buttonhole is going to be to fit this button. So it's also telling us other things that we need to do. So we also need to find the buttonhole foot lever or the doobry as I like to call it, but I need to attach this foot first. So each of the feet have got this little bar. So if I show you back on with A, that's a little bar there, little bar there, all of them have got that little bar. And we need to attach that using our presser foot lever. So it also has an extra lift. So if you see this is in its upright position, I can lift it up. If I've got bulky fabric or something bulky to get through, I can lift it up and it, will, um, it won't stay up. I have to keep it held up. But now I'm going to pop this buttonhole foot in the right position and then just put the press of, uh, presser foot lever down and it catches. So I just need to make sure my thread is not all caught up. It's not. So um, I'll check I've got enough bobbin thread. That's the beauty as well of having a drop in bobbin because I don't want to run out of bobbin. If you remember, I didn't wind a full, full bobbin, otherwise it'd have been fine. But we've done a few fancy stitches and there is enough, hopefully enough to do a, a buttonhole. So we're kind of all ready. We've got our foot R on. We're on pattern number 24, which is a buttonhole with square ends. And it also is telling us that I need to locate this, which is the buttonhole lever. And it's behind the um, needle threader. And it's just a little thing that slides down. It's hidden away. You locate it and you bring it down and make sure it is positioned in between that gap in between that gap of the buttonhole foot. So here's a lovely opportunity to take our foot pedal out because at the moment our foot pedal is showing that it's on or it's in. I'm going to take the foot pedal out. The foot pedal icon has gone. So I'm going to do this with no using no feet, which is quite fun. It, Fabric's in, it's going to go backwards. I'm just going to press start, stop. I might put the needle in just to get it going. Press start, stop. And then this is a fully automatic button mark. It's just going to do the whole thing. And I don't need to do anything. In theory, I shouldn't have to guide it. It will just do its own thing. And then hopefully it'll be creating a perfect button hole. Buttonholes don't get any easier than this, I tell you. Okay, so I lift the presser foot, take the buttonhole lever away, use the thread cutter. Wow, very nice looking buttonhole. I'm just going to get rid of those threads. And then I'm going to take this foot off so as I can get my button out so as we can test it. So it needs opening up and we get a stitch ripper as well. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to pop my stitch ripper in one end and go to the middle and then go the other end. What that does is it saves you going boop all the way through your lovely buttonhole that you've just created. So nice and easy does it. Buttonhole through and voila. So, super little machine, the 230, 
um, take a look at us online. Um, we give lots of support, obviously. And thank you for joining us. If you've enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. Bye-bye.